just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar. Now, you may be looking at this on YouTube going, is the beak looking bigger or is he in a different place? Well, the beak <laughs> may be bigger, but I am in a different place. <laughs> I'm a Gypsy Tail Podcast. They've been gracious enough to allow us to use the studio because I needed to get my man Brimo. He's too arrogant to fly down to Sydney. So I thought I'd fly to him and get it done. But just want to say a massive thanks to Gypsy Tail Podcast. Uh, go to gypsy Tail Podcast. Well, gypsy-tail.com, that's the site. Go there if you want to grab any Gypsy Tail gear. Uh, really successful podcast. Actually had some footy players on. Heaps of different people from all walks of life are on it. Great podcast. Been around for a while. Uh, and also on Instagram, Gypsy Tail Podcast. But I have the great AJ Brimson here. How you going, brother? I'm going well. Thanks for having me and thanks for calling me arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we, we spoke about this off air, but I want to revisit this because this, this offended me. This really fucking pissed me off. You said that when people have do not disturb on, so you send them a message, mm-hmm. it says this person has do not disturb. Do you want to bother anyway? You said you send the message and then you say, yes, I do want to bother and you bother them anyway. Is that true? 100%. Uh, if I want to text you, I'm texting you for something important. So, And especially, you know, it might be midnight, 11 o'clock at night. But if you've got do not disturb on, a little, I'm not going to call you. Yeah. A little text message, a little ding. If you're, surely a little ding isn't waking you up. And if it is, my text as well. All right. What's, <laughs> it's a what's, win-win. what's your cutoff time then? Like if I'm rolling, so is it 11 o'clock that you're not going to do disturb? Or is it is it earlier? Because um, honestly, I'm in bed by 11. If you're dinging me at 11, I'm filthy. It depends how, how good it is. You know, okay. If it's, if it's a... <laughs> If it's worth you waking up to. If it's not, I can wait till the morning. What if? What about if I wanted to be the judge whether it was worth it or not, though? Are you a good judge or what? <laughs> <laughs> so you're a good judge. I'm a good judge. Okay, okay. fair enough, fair That's enough. Fair. Um, be really interesting to see what the comments are in the comment section. Is it worth disturbing a do not disturb person or is it not? For a bloke who's recently single, <laughs> I think he might uh, appreciate the, the, the notify. Okay. It's all love. It's all love. It's bro. all love, love baby. Wins. Um How's the preseason been going? We were just talking before. You feel like you're having one of the better preseasons you had in a while. How's it going? It's going well. Uh, the vibe's really good at the moment. The weather's been actually really good. There's usually a bit of flooding this time of year, and mm. our field especially gets under. So we're always at different venues and that. So it's actually been touch wood really good. But um, yeah, the, the additions of um, Ryan For- um, Kieran Foran and um, Sam Verrills have been mm. really good. So the vibe's good. But in terms of me individually, uh, Green's coming along well and um, just... Just getting away with a bare minimum at the moment, so the boys are into me. Torture. So basically, we spoke about this off air as well. You're being, you can do skills, and then they're capping the K's you do each week. Yeah. So at the moment, so there's like, I haven't done any conditioning with the team. Uh, the that boys are into me for, not, me off, for missing bro. all the yo yo. So they do this thing called body load. Yeah. And it's like this tough as like 10, 15 minute little block where there's mm-hmm. like up, down pads, medicine balls. It's just like a thing they do a couple of times a week. And I always G the boys up, like, you know, when they go to do, I go, come on, let's just rip into this. Eh? Let's just do it. Oh, As they go, sit in the shade and have some water. But um, so I still haven't done that. Probably try dodge the next yo-yo test as well. Mm. But um, just, yeah, in terms of Ks, like, um, just coming back, uh, full uh, the first week back was my full uh, week at preseason with the team. Yep. So I think they're just making sure I don't overdo it early because I'm 24 going on 40 with my body. Yeah. I mean, you look kind of 40. Mature. <laughs> Experience. <laughs> um, okay, so, and so, have you had an opportunity to test whether your cardio is as good as, you know what I mean? Like, I actually feel pretty good. I do a lot of off-feet conditioning. Mm. We do, the boys do that as well. Um, we've been training hard. Like, the boys have the big days. They're doing 10, 11 Ks on the field, gym, and then an off-feet conditioning session in the afternoon. Mm. Whether it's like assault, bike, rowing, whatever. Uh, but all up until Christmas, I was starting to do some conditioning just on the side of the field in terms of running. And then I was doing off feet uh, cardio every day. But we do 13 on 13 stuff now and I'm still blowing, but um, did a fair bit over the break just to keep things moving with the groin and that with the mm. physios and got to do some more conditioning out. And I actually feel pretty good. Yeah. Uh, pretty surprising, but everyone heads into round one thinking they're all right and then you're just absolutely cooked so and so are you have you put on muscle mass or have you lost muscle mass or you kept the same um i think i put on a little bit of muscle mass <laughs> does the, i'd like does to the say, scale say that? That? yeah like 0.2 or something <laughs> like that no we actually do these body scans and it like test how much kilos of muscle you yeah. have and how much fat in that so um before christmas i had a bit of fat to lose but that was probably due to me not running so much and having a decent off season and then um now I'm back running and, and gymming and, and off it, Conan. So yeah, 
Rig's slowly getting there. The rig's slowly getting there? Slowly. So you like shirt off down the beach, ready to go? Yeah, bro. Are you ready now? Were you ready uh, pretty crispy? I'm ready now if I'm standing. Like, I don't want to be sitting down a hunch. You know, <laughs> you know those self-conscious yeah. hunches? Bro, you know how you know how ripped you got to be to not be, bro, like, get something when you hunch? I don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's worth it. Like, you have to be pretty ripped to be sitting there and still look decent. So yep. I just stand up. <laughs> Good lighting. Lean back. You always, what, face the sun? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to get the sun. You know those, bro, you know what I actually can't understand? Like, I've got photos of my phone of me at the beach some in like some lighting where the sun's behind you it looks like i've got zero definition in my rig yeah, whatsoever yeah. like it's nothing like yeah. no chest no arms <laughs> shit rig you turn around you get a good lighting i'm like is that chick right. still me? yeah i'm like Fuck, <laughs> actually look right here you know what i used to think was funny is like when you take took a photo thinking like you're gonna be looking ripped and then you went and looked at the photo and you're like bro i look terrible bro, that's the worst day that's head noise eh? <laughs> it smashes you, you to don't pieces. eat for the rest of it <laughs> you meant to go have maccas that night no no not tonight <laughs> um yeah, so what's the, I guess, we speak about a lot on our podcast in regards to the Titans. Like, we think your attack is incredible. We just think the defense, well, not we. I personally think, like, the one thing you guys need to fix is defense. Once you can, like, fix that, mm. you can challenge for the eight. Is that something that you guys have really focused on in, off, in the preseason or not really? No, we have. And to be fair, we've kind of, I reckon it's been a known thing for, for years now. Like, mm. we've always been kind of known as like unfortunately like a touch footy team mm. like end to end we can put on some mad uh full field tries but then we can let in full field tries and, and whatnot so i think the addition of um having brett white in here from uh melbourne and canberra he's just kind of got that tough mentality and but he's he's also like a legend as well off the field and we're just putting in a lot of work in terms of our, our defense we've kind of um brought it right back shipped it right back to the basics of literally getting feet into contact like mm. from like what you would do as an under 10s like yeah. learning how to tackle properly um and then obviously you've got you know whether you're jamming or passive or all those sort of things but um it has been a massive focus this preseason but i also think the downfall for us isn't just our defense it's probably our effort as well like mm. in terms of even something similar like uh simple like line speed and kick chase like uh things that require like literally no skill like yep. it sounds cliche but like they're the things that penrith and shit actually do absolutely and and it and it shows. So mm. I think if we can get in better at that part of the game and really enjoy and focusing on and on, on our grind in defence, then like yeah, I know with attack, like we can score from anywhere. We always we always can. Um, and now we've still got I mean we've got um, new players in our spine and, mm. and things like that. So we're going to be dangerous. It's just like you said, like playing an eighty minute game and yeah, being able to defend. It sounds so cliche, but it really is just the standards you set mm. for the player beside you. Like, are you going to watch? If, whether he's a senior or a junior player, are you going to watch him not tie in from the inside and not say anything? Mm. Or are you all going to pipe up and be like, oh, that's fucking not good enough. Hold yeah. each other accountable kind of thing. It's hard, man. Like, <laughs> I'm one of the uh, senior players. We are a leadership group thing, but I'm one of the senior players there now. And it's hard. Like, we have, like, a rule, like, no phones and massage. And mm. then we'll be there. In that, and it's not a massive rule. It's just, yeah. you know, like, it's a little session. Just yep. zone out for a bit. And I'll see someone on the thing, and I'm like, I don't want to be that fucking narc that's like... But then I'm like, if I don't do it, then fuck, we're just, um, we're, you know, we're just in the same yep, spot. Absolutely. So I, you know, got to be the old, wait, like, you know, as a G out. Like, no on. phones, you know, no yeah. phones can't like fucking yeah. muck around a bit, but they're the things. And I think um, Foran's been really good at that. Straight away, as soon as he's on the field, he's just like, bring the boys in. Obviously, we all grew up, I grew up watching him. Mm. So it's like, it's awesome having them. And I think, you then you don't want to, um, you don't want to train shit because you don't want him to be like, fuck on, man, you're better than that. You know, yeah. just really already like lifts the standards of training. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's important. Those senior players, like, it's they're so important. I remember, uh, so we were doing fitness at the Broncos, and this is like, it would have been like 2006, six, seven. So a good, like, we had a lot of good players. A good era. Good era. Um, anyway, so did fitness, and like, I won the fitness drill by a substantial margin. I mean, that's what I do, but... Fuck, <laughs> 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 like, man, was this? <laughs> God. <laughs> anyway, no, so, but I won by a while. But anyway, so on the last, you know, the 1.2K, up 20, up 40, up yeah, 60 yeah. back. Oh, yeah. And so on the last stretch... I was like layering up, like just 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 running, layering up a little bit. Carrying on, and and I, and so I had won the the fitness by you know a good margin or whatever. Anyway, so like Sammy thought he pulls me up after it, and he was like, "Mate, don't ever fucking do that again." And that was the the level that they even if you're winning by a, a long margin, they still have standards that can be set even higher. Like for example, instead of layering up, I should have ran harder, yeah, and that's yeah. the message here. And it stuck with me. I never, obviously, never did it again in a fitness drill. Yeah. But that's the the level that's, that's a st level of standards you've got to have. Like mm. you've got to have senior players like Sammy Thaiday going, "Bruh, you actually could have been even better 
instead of carrying on like a dickhead. Yeah. And like, that, I think that's the beauty of why those teams are so so great. Like Melbourne, Broncos back in the day, like those mm. sort of things. And probably another area where we've struggled is having those senior players. For sure. Like I look at me, I still feel like a, which I am a kid, mm. but I am one of the more experienced players in the team. And then you get someone like Fozzie and you're like, fuck, like yeah, this wow. guy knows what he's talking about. He's been around in a good way. Mm. And like, you can just see the the impact that it has because like I can say something, but like I'm also still one of the boys who's early twenties, you know, and it doesn't mm. have that same effect. And yeah. when someone like Sam Thaid or something says something, you know, you you don't want to and like like Foran already in like he's already got that authority over the group. Yeah. Um, and Tino's got it, but again, Tino's he's still learning. He's still yeah, really young. He's absolutely. still one of the boys. Yep. As not that he can't be one of the boys, but you know, he'll he'll have a he's still got a kid brain. He's in yep. the meetings, poking people and everything as yep. well. He just um. Obviously, when he's out there, he leads with his actions. But well, it's very hard for him. Like, let's say you're behind the trial and the try has been let in, and he's like, what, 22, 21, 22. And 22. Broncos had this issue, this this issue as well. Like Paddy, like Paddy and Tino, they're going to be play for state for the next ten years. Everyone knows how good they are, but it's very hard for him to come and say, you know, fucking pull your head in, do this, because it's like, bro, you've only played like fifty NRL games. Like, mm. you don't really know much about NRL either. Whereas, like, as you said. Foran, he has seen it all. He's yeah. seen literally the, the tippity top and all the way to the mm. to the bottom. And so whatever he says, you're going to be like, well, if you've been around for 250 games or 300 games, whatever it is, you know what, yep. you've got that authority. Yeah, It's very hard. It doesn't matter how good a young player it is, it's very hard to have that authority. 100%. And when you've got older players in the squad, it is hard to for them to buy into it as well. You've got mm. players who've literally played double amount of games as in going like, Hang on, like yeah, what? What's I was I was around when you were playing sixteen. You know yeah. what I mean? But I think we've kind of filtered out um, some of the the older boys, and I think at the moment we've got like a pretty young squad, which is good. But we've got a a squad that's kind of like eager to mm. learn now, and it's I think it's good. And what's the what's something that you've really obviously with the authority of foreign and every, and making sure everyone meets a certain standard? What's something else you've kind of noticed since foreign has arrived? Um, he's pretty um. Like he's a legend bloke, but he's pretty like he's pretty like in depth with like the way he goes with things, like mm. the way he wants to play, and um, you're like obviously if I'm gonna be in the spine with him, we we've been working closely and just 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 tips that he's taken from players like Turbo, things like that, and what they used to do and and how he really um, identifies like each in, each team individually and like yep. where he's gonna play them, and it's the same when we versed him. I used to hate versing. You do that little seventy one, the winger jams, he goes over top. If he stays out, he hits the back. Like he just always hits the right option. Yeah. He freaking digs that far into the line, man. Yeah. Every time we do any word of a block, I literally think it's coming to me and then he hit shorter. I don't think he's hit me, he plays that back. But just probably just in depth in his detail. I think <clears throat> I've been around players like Ches and that and like yeah. just the like they're all keen to have fun off the field, mm. but then like when they're out there it's like fucking we're getting this done yeah. and then we can muck around again. One thing that I like as I got older I started to realise is like these guys aren't there by accident. Like mm. they're not there by luck that they just their talent was really good. Like they study and work on their game like every single day yeah. every day and their body like yeah. i'm only this is my sixth year and i'm like i feel like it's gone so quick but then you look it's been like six years and you're like and this guy's been like 13 13 years whatever it is yeah. and it's like you got to be you gotta be doing a lot of stuff off the field to keep like oh. and obviously he's had his fair share of injuries yeah but he's you know he's pretty professional in that way and i'm like mm. when i'll be getting older it's it'd be hard, like harder and harder to find the yeah. motivation to get up and stretch and do that sort of shit so mm. that's good um, anyway, take us back to uh, well. Uh, sorry, we'll talk about it um, in the off season. Obviously, you lost your best mate, mm-hmm. Hampo. Um, how's it been since? And I guess one of th- one thing I wanted to, and you obviously can do whatever you want, but what, like maybe just a nice story about him that would kind of explain what he was like as a bloke for people that are listening. I, me personally, that I remember when I did come around and drop those beers off. And yeah, was he was like, there. He was there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, remember yeah. how he had a game the next day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like such one of the boys. Yeah. That he's like. He was like, oh, I better go to bed and that. And, and we were like, come on, bro. And he was like, oh, all right. And he came down. He only had one beer or whatever. Yeah. But that was the kind of bloke he was. Like, he was definitely, yeah. like, a lot of people say, oh, he's one of the boys. Mm. But he was actually yeah. one of the boys. Nah, he's a ledge. He, um, he loved his footy. Loved, obviously, bloke in a bar, that sort of shit. Like, just the, he's just a realist, bro. You know, he just fucking um, um, took life as it came. And then he was fucking, couldn't wait to get overseas. He'd been waiting to go to Europe and she was going to do his Kentucky. And then that's when, because I had a missus and that. And I was like, so we broke up. I was like, fuck, I'll come over with you. Mm. And like, like we, like we had the time of our life, bro. Like mm. the shit we did, like fucking, it was best memories, which is, I think probably gives his family a bit of comfort and that sort of stuff. 
uh, he's doing his teacher course. He was just about to finish his um, university there. And yeah, we lived together for about four years mm. at that house and then down at Palm Beach. Mm. And he only left because he went to ready just to try um crack, you know, obviously NRL preseason. Yeah. And I think possibly it was on the cards. Uh, he had a good year again uh, up there, but I think he was kind of saying to me, like, I'm going to give it one more year. If not, I'm going to come back down the coast because he was, you know, single lad, sur- like a little surfing down the coast, playing at the Tweed, yep. loving it. But he just kind of went up there for one last crack to try to make it. Uh, but but yeah, nah. It's hard to throw, I think of one story really. Uh, yeah. But he, he was honest, honestly, God, like not even saying this, like easily, easily the funniest mate I had. Easily. Oh really? Like just the video, just little shit. Because like, you know when you live with someone, you just sit on the couch talking shit, and like yeah. <laughs> you just end up having so many little inside jokes. And yeah. we used to live with me, him, and my brother. So like the amount of times like we just have a little fucking dumb jokes, and he'd just be you know just sitting there just off us because yeah. it'd be about nothing, but. Literally not in general, easily my funniest mate. Right. Yeah, sucks. as I said, the, the small small interaction I had with him, you could tell like you know, each person kinda of has a role in the crew. Yeah, yeah. And like he was the, he always like seemed to bring the happiness in uh, the crew. Talk about knowing your role, like he knew his role, like yeah. and that's why he was so good to live with. Like mm. when we were at school, he was the grubbiest dude, not grubbiest, <laughs> but like eat his Vegemite all on his face, just like <laughs> and he was honestly if you'd asked me at year twelve, like who's one person you wouldn't want to live with, it would have been Liam. Honestly God. <laughs> And he's a st- he was a stingiest dude. When he first moved, uh, when he first, so he went to New Zealand. He's at uh, Warriors, playing a bit of 20s there. Yeah. He fucking pull, came back real <laughs> real smart, came back real quick. So he's asking to move in. I was living with Phil Sammy at the time. Mm. And it was like a three bed and we were just like fresh 18. We were like, not struggling, but we could have used an extra, extra room. Yeah, rent. for sure. And, he, and he's offered like $50 a week to live in the garage or something. I said, <laughs> fuck no, you know. And then we well, I would have never said yes. I think we agreed on like $75 or something because I was like, bro, I need something. But then I'm like, 75 is better than nothing for yeah, us. Yeah. And I was like, anyway, so he ended up moving in the room. In the garage or in nah, the No, we let him in the room because I was like, bro, you could be in the garage just to sleep. But you're still annoying us in the fridge, in the kitchen, in the lounge. Like, yeah, yeah. You're just, no one's going to be in your room anyway. Um, so nah, but we used to always call him pretty stingy. Uh, but... Yes, yeah, so we lived together for those years, and he had a missus at the start, and he was just a proper simp, proper burger. Just oh, like, really? <laughs> worst dude ever, and then they broke I, up, and he. I think we've all been through that stage, oh, young blokes. Yeah. Like you just simp so hard, and then you realise right. that like it's just not the way to and go. And then afterwards, he was, he, he was good. He admitted yeah. it. He's like, yeah, like I admit, I was, <laughs> I was simp. Yeah, massively. So, <gasps> mate, um, yeah, it's, it's it's obviously tragic, but I guess the the joy that he did bring is better than not having it. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, I think he was like calling home overseas and like apparently the amount of times he was saying like he's literally having the best time of his life. Yeah, so So good. like I think that did kind of give him comfort because like like I said, you you know at your website like we had we had some fun. Yeah. Oktoberfest, uh, Ibiza, all that sort of stuff. So mm. it was good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, take us back to a young fella, bro. Young Brimo. Um, born on the Gold Coast? Born in Brizzy, Wesley. Born in Brizzy. So yeah, you can't bro. even claim to be a Gold Coast man like me. Well, I was, I was day one Broncos fan. you day one Broncos fan? Well, I was. But you, you you pretend you're a Goldie kid. Like you got the Alfred's apartment hat. Yeah, like bro. you think you're bro. mad. Like I local. Claim I'm you're not Palmy. a local, bro. I've been Palmy two years. Bro, you're not a local. Fraud. Just so you know, you're not. From a local, you're not a local. <laughs> Burley, Palmy. You reckon you're the king? Prince. I don't want to be the king. I'm, I'm happy being the prince. You're the prince of prince. Burley. Who's uh, the king? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, don't want to be. King. That's what I'm saying. Isn't it like a del- direct line of lineage there? I actually reckon, honestly, I'll give a shout to, um, do you know MC? He's the owner of the Valley's Eyewear, Michael Crawley. Uh, he lives in Palmy. Okay. He's, 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 he's a, a big king. dog. He's a big dog. He's mates with Chris Hemsworth, that kind of thing. Oh, that he can be the king. I don't okay. want to be the king. Okay, so you're the prince. But um, born in Brizzy, was at Suncorp every Friday night, yeah. watching Bronx. I was actually at the game. You know the one where, I think we've spoken about this, where um, Lockie kicks it over. You run down the sideline, maybe against Para, possibly. Yeah, Para, yeah. Yeah, you run yeah. down, you score. Like I was there. Like I was no like, way. Yeah, yeah. Where were you sitting? Like is I was, high, low. I was like say medium, and I would have been <clears throat> if this is halfway, and you've run down here to score. I would have been here. I remember like watching you, but then like not seeing if you got it down. Like, yeah, trying yeah. To look at the big screen. Oh, I got it down, bro. I got it down. I don't know, lad. <laughs> <laughs> they're the bunker these days. Yeah, these days are fucking. It got down. A little bubble. I tell you um, what, it fucking broke me beak doing it though. I got my head literally grazed along the ground. Is that how it? No, it's, I mean, look, I'll, look. Was it I, already big? Look, I tell people it's big because they're being broken a lot, but I'll be honest, it's just the way it is. It's just naturally. It's big. just naturally big. That's fair. But I reckon, like, I reckon big noses are hot again. I reckon, bro. Are they back in? Like, like I reckon Crocs. they're back in. <laughs> Crocs and big noses. Yeah, are back yeah. In. Like you know, everyone hated Crocs for a bit. Yeah. And like hated everyone hated big noses. I, I reckon, like, I might be responsible for the rebirth of the big nose. Well, you've owned it, which is good. <laughs> you know, like, 
you know, you've owned it, which is good. You've... And like the best thing is, is like my missus told me all the time, like she doesn't like hot dudes anyway. So, bro, why would you like hot? I don't. I like hot chicks. <laughs> exactly, either. bro. I don't like hot chicks at all. <laughs> and so, like, I'm like, oh, thanks, babe. It's like we're all different preferences, and you clearly don't like good-looking dudes. Well, that's lucky for you. <laughs> Should we stay, <laughs> mate? I'm a glamour to her because I'm. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. on the other end and, of the scale. And your rig's getting better too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew you would say something about it. I knew you would say something about it. Rig's getting way better, bro. Oh, biceps. Yeah, look, I've been man. putting in the work, baby. But yeah, Brizzy boy, um, uh, moved to the coast. My mum met her. Who was your Who was your favorite player? Was Lockie? Yeah, Lockie, Lockie, Lockie Hodges. Lockie Hodges, the great. Yes, other Hodges. Yeah, and um, yeah, and like the sick thing was when I played Twenties Origin, we had Justin Hodges as a coach. And yep. like, I remember waiting around the field trying to get photos. I actually ran out. Um, my like mum's friend, someone knew Ben Hannah, and he organised me. I like um, for like my birthday, I mm. ran out. I got like, photos when I was like seven. You know, you like little kids run out in front of a team. Yeah, I did that at the, the Bronx one day. I remember like looking in the sheds and seeing like Lockyer and that about oh, to run out. I'm like, oh my lord! And then like you have like a camp and Justin Hodges, your coach, and you mm. have like beers with him. I'm like, fuck, this is crazy. Yeah. And then I um, parents split up when I was like ten or mm. whatever. And um, was, that, was that tough? Or you were too uh, young to kind of? Yeah, not really. It was yeah. just like I was pretty young, so then it was just like normal. It was just like. Um, it wasn't like a, yeah, I think I would have been like maybe eight or nine Yeah, okay. when they split up. Like it wasn't a massive deal to be honest. And then it was just normal. It was just so normal that I'd go dads, I'd go mums. Okay. So you just made it part, almost like it is what it is. And I just, yeah. 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 And like, like you said, like if maybe if I'm when I was 15, I'd be like, fuck rattled. Like, yeah. fuck, like my parents are splitting up. But, Cause it's just like, all I remember now. Mm. Um, so then dad said in Brizzy and, um, mum met a husband now down on the coast. Um, so I moved, I moved down the coast when I was 12 and then I was just kind of like, like playing touch footy as my main sport. Mm. Went to like a St. Andrews Lutheran College and I was just like, frick, this ain't for me. Mm. Then I went to Benoist State High School of grade eight and nine. Benoist. Yeah, no bro. way. That's a pretty rough school. I mean, I don't know about now, but when I was growing up, it was It was rough. like, <clears throat> so when I first went to Kibra, they're like, oh, like watch out. Like there was like, 10 more fights at Benoist than there would have been at Kibra. Like yeah. all the big boys are footy boys that are church boys, nice. No, one, no yeah. one's as bad as as the standard skater boys who are freaking want to get in fights and shit yeah. that was what Benoit was like yeah um, so they always like because I was at St. Kevin's for primary school which is across the road yeah 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 and so like there was always this weird like tension of them like wanting to fight us for no reason yeah. and we like uh, there's a lot of darrows I go but I literally don't know what's going on and who you guys are if <laughs> you want to fight us what's going on <laughs> if you want to fight us go but like I knocked about six times <laughs> out whatever uh, but uh, <laughs> I've seen you three hands too and uh, and um <clears throat> Uh, so like yeah like I literally when I was at Kibra I was like 15 still had like zero idea how to play footy like properly yeah. so you would just purely touch footy at this touch stage footy. Yeah. I'd play, I played like a little bit of club like Corumbin mm. and Southport but like I just used to play touch was that because like was it because you just purely enjoyed touch more or was it because you were a smaller player when you were younger or was that like you know what I mean probably a bit of enjoying touch but then also making rep in touch and not making rep in footy like okay. I tried out for like under 12 yeah. and didn't get anywhere so then 15s, you have like, yeah, South Coast, Queensland and that. Um, they actually only picked, you can only pick like 20 boys to go trial from our school. Mm. And I wasn't in the 80s in 15. So like, I didn't make the team that got to trial for the district team in 15s. No way. Yeah, so like, they picked like the A's plus like four and they picked these other four. Mm. So I literally didn't even get to trial for the team that trials for South Coast. So I was just like, wow, like I'm an absolute loser. And it's just like <laughs> South Coast, like yeah. Well, it's not even. It's the one before South Coast. Yeah. It's a district that then plays. Also, oh, not South, even plays for, for Broadwater. So there's like Broadwater Pacific, whatever oh that is. Oh my god! Because there's like you know like a few schools that trial for this Broadwater. Then there's yeah. like the Palm Beach schools that trial for the South. Bro, one. you can nearly turn up and get a gig there. Like that's <laughs> bro. Literally, if you can pass the ball, catch and pass. But I think because it was at Kira, I swear <laughs> it wasn't because I suck. <laughs> um, and then. We had a good team then, but like I was in the Bs. And then the next year is when I started playing like 16s, like Cyril Connell actually started like, mm. I don't know how, I just started playing good footy or better footy. Started like somewhat learning the game a bit more. You know, when you're young, you just kind of get the ball and do whatever. Yeah. Somewhat starting to understand the game. And then our coach at the time was, um, or the Open Bs was uh, Ben Wolf, who was, he just signed as a 20s Titans coach. He's mm. the one that was at Tweed Seagulls and he's just gone down to Dragons as a defensive coach. Ben Wolf, did you say? Yep. Is he related to Christian Wolf or no? Yep, brother. Oh, okay. Brother. Yep. Um, Christian Wolf is the Tongan, former Tongan coach, now assistant coach at the, the Dolphins for people that want to know. Yeah. And he's a good coach. I've never had him, but I think the Tongan boy is not that rave on about he's him. A gr- oh, he's at the, he was at the Broncos. Um, 
Was he when you when I was there? Yeah, I think he's assistant coach. And he, I could always see him laughing at me when I was like layering up and that. Yeah, yeah, carrying on. So he always had a good vibe with me. I think anyway, no, he might hate my. <laughs> he's really laughing at you. <laughs> yeah, he's like, if I you fucking hate to this kid. <laughs> I'm trying to train, and this cunt's fucking carrying on like a dickhead. Um, uh, no, but I, yeah, I like. I really enjoyed Christian. So they were good. Then he invited me to come to Titans, like a you know those junior academy, you're 15 mm. or 16 years old. Um, those mm. little you do like one day every like school holiday sort of shit. Yeah. And I was doing that, and I started playing 18s, and then um, year 12 at Kubra. And I mean, like, we lost early. We had, I was counting the other day, we had seven players in our team. Mm. I'm pretty sure it was seven play NRL in our year 12 team. And we lost early in the quarters to Palm Beach. No just, way. Just, I wouldn't say we choked. Like, they were a decent team. But, like, I mean, looking back on our team, we're like, we had, like, our front rows were Tom McKayley, Payne House, and Milwaukee. Like, Holy. at school. Like, and we had that Cons Lamelu, Jesse Arthurs, that Tyrone Roberts Davis. Was Payne House I mean, always massive? Yeah. Far out. Yeah, he was. Holy. And then you got like, they feed on that. They were like two years below us. So they weren't even, they were in 15s, like Tanner Boyd. So they had a good team too. Far out. Um, is Benji like a god at Kiba? Yeah. Because like, yeah, I, he is. I could be wrong, but I feel like, he, was he like the first superstar? From I don't there, know maybe? if he was the first, but he's, he might have been the first, but I think like you hear stories, like, you know, they kind of refer back to old players at Kiba. Yeah. <laughs> and you just, you hear stories of like when he came over and then you see like when he first debuted in the NRL and they were chatting about him and he's like flicking it, stepping it. Yeah. Like, so I like, I always like thought of him and like um, Ben Tio on that. You know, like oh, Benny Tio, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's heaps. Mm. They were heaps of gun players. I reckon um, Greg Eastwood was like a fullback. They Greg Eastwood? He was one of the most skillful players ever. But I'm telling you right now, Greg Eastwood is one of the most skillful, for, skillful, skillful forwards. Skillful. Skillful. <laughs> the, uh, you know what's crazy? I make a living talking and I can't talk. <laughs> like how does that work? Yeah, that's um, fair. Yeah, he's one of the most skillful forwards uh, that I've ever seen. Ever seen. Crazy footwork, great ball skills. Um, and he was the man coming through, like mm. the actual man. Yep. And he Corey was... Norman. I heard Corey Norman was one of the Oh, like, Normie. Oh, Norm Dog. Brother Normie, Brother eh? Normie, oh, <laughs> Shout out, Normie. Kiva's finest. Uh, and then I just, yeah, just worked my way through. Got a little, you know, I think it was a three-year contract worth four grand or whatever. It was like the yeah. under-20 sort of thing. <laughs> But, you know, like back then, it's like, I'm contracted at NRL club. You yeah. don't, I would have paid them to contract me, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely. And then... Um, and getting the kit too? Yeah, literally. You know, wearing the backpack, wearing yeah. to school, thinking the man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the boys wear their Queensland backpack to school? Yeah. Um, oh, actually, yeah. So in year 12, I made the South Coast team. Mm. Um, but that's when I didn't make Queensland. That was like, I think Jake Clifford and this other boy from up north made it. Mm. Um but like, it, like I was signed at Titans I didn't care Like obviously I would have Wanted to make Queensland But I was mm. like um, I'm, I'm trying to play 20s next year Out of school Like that's what I'm Focused yeah. on Like yeah. um, And then Yeah just Then they got my first Full time Contract In NRL For a couple of years And then Haven't looked back since eh? And so out, So you make the South Coast side You 12 Yep And so out of school Did you go straight Into the first grade squad Or are you under 20s Nah 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 So I went uh, So I graduated 2015 for like two days into schoolies, I started my. I was doing apprenticeship one day a week, mm. as you saw my youth outside. I'm a full <laughs> certified not a tradesman. Tradie, bro. Don't roll around gold. Houses, you think you're a I build dreams. Oh, Palm please. Beach, please. Anyway, so so I was gone one day a week, and then I finished. Literally, had like a week off. Mm. Then I was into full time working, and that was I worked all of uh, end of 2015, 16, and. 17 i went to full-time pre-season into 2017 into the 18 season um so yeah we we're straight out of school in the 20s pre-season and did 20s pre-season the first year played 20s 2016 did one day a week pre-season the nrl mm. um 20 and 2016 going do you to remember season. like any of your first kind of dealings in that first grade squad Fuck, at all? Bro. <laughs> i look i like it's so good so i chat to the young boys today like and times have changed like times have changed at most clubs i think especially our club with like mm. Like you said, you know, I've heard stories about when you first started, like mm. you've told me like how savage it was and it how hostile it was, man, yeah. which is good. And we probably got a little bit of that, but mm. even when I first started, there was a bit, mm. but nothing like that. I chat to all the young boys. I'm like, man, you don't know how good you got it. Like <laughs> yeah. I walk in and see a fresh 18 year old and I'm going up. How was your weekend slabbing? Like, cause I don't care. Like I don't yeah. think I'm the man. Yeah. And not that it's just, it's just times are different now. Kids yeah. don't really re respond to that well anymore. Not like kids. Yeah. So it's a bit different, but, um, I remember when I first came and Pete C and all those boys and Pete C's a legend now like love you on the pitch I'm always texting but like he he would never come up to me and be like sup bro how was your weekend like and you'd kind of go up to him and say hi and he'd like yeah nod like hey and they keep walking you're like 
Fuck, you kind of got to earn that. You got to earn it, yeah. And we'd be going to the gym and, you know, they'd be like, fuck, we got squats today. And the boys are like, someone would be like, fuck, like, no, nah, I'm not doing it like G and up. Hmm. And you're like, they look at you and you're like, oh, am I doing this like sit up <laughs> properly? Like you're like stretching, like you don't want to yeah. do anything wrong. Yeah. And I look at it now, I'm like, I don't know if the kids, they, maybe they do. Some of the young boys, they feel like that today. They feel mm. like they're like always on edge. Mm. It is a good feeling like not being on edge yeah, like, yeah. as much. Um, but now, you know, you're walking to the gym and you're, you're into the gym coach. You're like, oh, fuck, I'm not doing that shit. You're, you're mucking around. <laughs> like, around yep. but, and you're always fucking around. But, um, so it's like normal. But I remember when I first started like, man, you're like driving and you're thinking, fuck, am I late? You're an hour early. You're going, yeah. fuck, am I late? <laughs> like I'm stressing. Like, I'm wearing the right shirt. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, haven't got the right kit. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's just different. Times. Different generation, I yeah. think. And it's not better or worse. Like a lot of people try to, you know, go, oh, you know, younger generations like soft or whatever. And like, okay, maybe, I guess, but also... <laughs> I guess, maybe. No, but like also there is a benefit in allowing younger players to feel confident. Mm. Because if they don't, they, they debut and they, they don't make the right choices. They're not confident in their ability. And so, like, both sides have good and bad. Mm-hmm. Like, the old school way, it's too harsh. And think about how many young, talented kids... Get turned away. Get turned away because they're like, man, I can't. Yeah. I'm sick of rocking up and feeling like I've done something wrong yeah. or whatever. So, I think both have good and bad. Yeah. Like, I really do. Yeah, I think um, even with, like, similar to, like, coaching techniques, like, you hear, like, old school people, like, you can still spray people and people still get sprayed, but it's like some of the young ones it's like it's like more detrimental just it's it's better off kind of being around the bush with yeah. some things or treating them differently because some players just go into their shell and if you want someone firing mm. and confidence is their only thing and and if you know you go you put them on blast in front of everyone which you think would work for everyone but some people then go fuck this like yeah. i'm just not even gonna do this you know what i mean yeah. like and then it's like well then you lose a good player yeah. and it's like well the coach doesn't back me so like yeah, i better not do this and they start second guessing themselves and as much as it, it is like fuck it's like kind of soft it's like well at the end of the day you want to get your players playing the best foot in it's yep. like that's up to the coach how they, how they get that out I of always it. look at like you know the NFL for example like they couldn't be more confident those players like they're <laughs> so confident and arrogant and I love it <laughs> <laughs> and so like the layering up okay it's whatever but like you'd have to think that however you can get 17 players as confident and as happy as possible like with whilst keeping standards obviously not you know do whatever you have to think that's the best environment mm. to be in and you're right like not everyone responds the same way like it's like wayne bennett used to be the best at it he understood that certain players needed to be yelled at mm. and certain players just spoken to privately like this that the next away thing. from the group yeah and so i think like yeah i think you're right in regards to the goal should absolutely be how do we win footy matches not you know we spray tough? people yeah. yeah you tough and can you handle it it's like well no we want to win matches that's yeah. all we want to do i want to um, play i want to play footy yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so it's uh it's interesting to see it's things things change and look like they wouldn't it's such a competitive environment they wouldn't change like this if it wasn't usually in most cases i'm sure there are definitely some cases where players are taking the piss for sure mm. where it's better for the team yeah because like, why would clubs do it? Trying yeah. to win premierships here. Yeah, exactly. So why would you change the way you do things if it's not as good for? If you don't think it's gonna work. Yeah, or it's better. Um, anyway, so yeah, you do you remember any f- like wrestling sessions or tough fitness sessions in the first year or two of being the first grade squad? You know, you're going into your first preseason. You're not eating maccas. You're not getting on the piss. Oh, like mm. me, mm. and I'm training every day. So I went in fit. You know, like no, I wasn't winning it, but I was probably the fittest I'd ever been. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, you know, you get into like a full full time system, you start getting flogged. But I guess, I think like the adrenaline and the nerves just kind of, yeah. in the first couple of years, you're just like, like I said, always on edge, trying to take over, <laughs> trying to. And then that's when we had uh, Garth Brennan. So we had uh, Neil Henry the first time, I was one day a week. Yep. And then we went to Garth Brennan. And, and mm. like he didn't he didn't mind a spray either. Mm. Um, so I copped a few sprays off him. And like, you know, when you're young, you're like, it's pretty daunting getting oh, like, you're spray, especially by the boys as well. Yeah, like, yeah. You throw a shit pill and PT's he's like, the fuck are you doing? You're like, Damn, yeah. that makes you not want to get the footy from today. Yeah, exactly. And like, you're not calling for it as go much. Right, yeah. Go right, Go right. Because you don't want to drop it's it. You don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, and then you go home and you think about it all afternoon. Yeah. Like, oh, he's like, he's pizza off me. Like, even though he's like, hasn't thought about it again. Yeah, he, he doesn't even know your name. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't care, bro. <laughs> but you're wigging going, oh, he doesn't like me anymore. Uh, like, yeah. it's uh, And you don't want that. That's not good. Like, yeah. that's not good to be like that. Anyway, so 2018, you make your debut. Yeah. 5 8, round 10. Uh, against a storm. Yeah, bro. Do you remember how it came about the debut? Yeah, I remember like um, hearing uh, one of the boys who lived with Ash was saying, he kind of like G me up in the morning. He's like, you're playing this week. It was like the Tuesday. Mm. 
And I was like, getting yeah, straight. I was like, fuck, shut up. Yeah. He's like, nah, I swear, bro. Like, you know, kind of like with a smirk. And mm. I was like, it's like, but I, I told, I got told not to say it, whatever. And I'm like, you know, you're never going to believe that. And then he, um, yeah, uh, Breno pulled, pulled me aside and he's just like, oh, I think I'm playing you this week. And it was kind of been a bit of chat for like the last month. It's when LG was back at Tweed and they put Bryce Cartwright at six and it, like we weren't going too well. And I was mm. just hoping. And then he's like, oh, um, do you think you're ready? And I was like, well, I'm not going to hesitate and say, oh, like, what am I going to say? No, nah, I think I need another couple weeks of cut. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. 100%. I'm like, yeah. fucking keen. But like when the article came out, he must have just like added a bit of GST to it because it said that that I was like, like what took you so long or something? Like I was just like real confident. I was like, fuck, ease up. Like I, was, I didn't say that. But I just didn't want to show any what like nerves. Like yeah. I didn't think I was ready. Well, you think that they want to see you go, fuck yeah, I'm 100%. ready to go. I yeah. just said what I, what I wanted, what, what I thought he wanted to hear, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to freeze and go, actually, you know what? One more week. <laughs> I'm like, we're getting out. I don't want to drop the ball. I might play bad. Everyone yeah, will be off exactly. me. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh and then there's yeah, a double header up at um suncorp but i actually remember i was room with phil um he's one of my uh, good mates and he's just like oh um you know like i didn't sleep the night before it was good to have him there kind of as my yeah. roomie he's like you know i didn't sleep the night before all this sort of shit i ended up having a mad sleep but i always remember like from under 20s debut we played south sydney down at the some some oval mm. 10 times more nervous for that than my NRL debut i don't know why really but i remember like we were on a plane and it was pissing down rain. Like it was the worst, most torrential rain. Mm. And like, I don't know why. I remember thinking like when we landed, cause it was like literally like, I was like, fuck, like we got here safely. Like I've got to play, you know, like not that I wanted to play in the crash, you know yeah. what I mean? I was like, fuck, like I've actually still got to play here. Like they're not mm. calling it off. Cause I remember when I ran out on, um, at Suncorp, it was a special, you know, I was at Suncorp, mm. Burson, Smithy, Slater, all those boys. <laughs> it was sick. Yeah. And I remember like running out for warm up, just being like, fucking excited like mm. okay no matter how shit i play yeah i fucking made i played no under, one can take it away no one can do anything yeah. like, i think in 20s i was still kind of climb so i was like fuck if i play shit they can put me back to 18s and i'm kind of fuck up the process yeah. but i remember thinking like obviously i didn't want to play shit but i'm like fuck if i play play shit i'm fucking playing around with someone called this is sick mm. obviously i was nervous but i wasn't fucking that nervous mm. um and then we actually were we're actually up at half time and they ended up coming back and winning um but it was a pretty, it was a pretty cool week having like all the friends and being like at home, not in Sydney, yep. like having, or not at home, but at, at Suncorp. Is there anything you remember from the games just you, like seeing Cam Smith or Slater, the way they moved and being like, wow. I remember like. two things. One thing they used to do this little, um, that turn up play where the half, I don't think Kronk was, I think Kronk was at Roosters. He was in at Roosters. Uh, um, they, might have been months. I don't know. They do this little turn up play where they hit Kafusi mm. and then he turns around and pops it to Billy Slater. Like, standard play and i mm. remember i can see it coming they've hit the lead hit billy and i remember like uh thinking oh yeah i've got him and he just fucking took off bro <laughs> like i wasn't used to that and like yeah. i ended up diving and just getting his boot but i remember thinking like i had him easily like he was where you are yeah and then in half a second he was like all the way over there and i was like mm. kind of like chilled for a second and then another thing um they did a drop out we got a repeat and i i caught it and i fucking I don't know if I was nervous, but I kind of like started a bit and passed it. And I passed the forward pass off the off the dropout, right? Mm. Like at halfway, the fucking touchy called it the dog. <laughs> <laughs> fucking touchy. Um, and I always remember they're all running in and like some of the boys around me, you know, it's a day, but it was a like halfway through the game. And fucking Vunavalu, <laughs> he looks at me and like they're all kind of in and he goes, ah, nice primps, <laughs> trying, to, <laughs> trying to mock me. And I always remember thinking like, fuck yeah, Vunavalu knows my name, kind of like Vunavalu knows who I am. <laughs> But I, I tell everyone that I always remember him like being like nice brimson, like mocking me. Yeah. Well, I was like, shame. Like I win this round. Like I like you as a player and you know who I am. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, but that was. It's uh, funny like the, that, that, that cream of the crop speed and that like you would have grown up, I'm sure always trusting your speed. Like, mm. bro, no one's getting me on the outside. Like, yeah. and then you get to NRL and just because you've got that kind of idea in your head of like, I'm not getting done on the outside. That's yeah. one thing that I do have at speed. And then you're going, holy shit. Yeah, like this is another level. Like <laughs> yeah. all these people have it. Like, yeah. But yeah, I just remember he just, <clears throat> Adam Sweet. I was like, oh yeah, here's a turn up. I know it's coming. Did video and then mm. Butts. I was like, shit, man. But um, it was, it was just cool to play against Smithy, mm. Slater and that. Getting um, today, booing Suncorp too. Like, and you grew up exactly. Broncos fan. I that. think it was like, not meant to be, but you know what I mean? Mm. Like it was, it was pretty cool to debut yeah. there. Well, it makes it even more special. Yeah, 100%. I debuted in Man down at Manly and so like, even though that was incredible, 
a debut at Suncourt would have been, mm. you know, crazy. Against yeah. Melbourne Storm too, yeah. it doesn't get much better yeah, than no, that. Yeah, no, it's, it's a... Like it's a good way to test yourself, you know. Like yeah. you had a double header. There's fifty, however many there. Yeah. And you versus uh, like probably the best team in the comp back mm. then. Um, just take us back quickly to your touch footy days. Who did you play touch footy with? Uh, well, I played um, fifteen Queensland with KP. Mm. Um, we versus Pappy. Um, we beat them. So you beat yourself up. Shout out Queensland, yeah. We actually we were up in Darwin, and um, and Pongo's a freak. He's um he's a good touch player, man. And um, we were up in Darwin and we, we played them in the round game and got absolutely pummeled by them. It was like 9-2 mm. or some yeah. shit. And they're, um, they had this little player. He actually was a good footy player. Is that Newcastle? His name was Brendan O'Hagan. He was a little ringer halfback. Mm. I think he might be in England or something playing now. Mm. He was a weapon. I've yeah. never seen someone rip a long ball like, <laughs> oh, like really? back then. Like when you're 15, it was like, yeah. that's like the stage where you start like being able to throw long, hit the winger. Yeah. But not many people do it left to right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was him, bro. He was tearing us shreds, yeah. man. Um, but yeah, and then we got to the final and, and we ended up beating them, which was sick. So, um, do you remember the score of the finals? I think we won by two. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We just, we just turned it on and it was sick. Like I look at like touch was like, when it's like your main sport, like it's pretty important. And like, it was, it was a mad kind of work up in Darwin for a week playing with like a good squad. And, um, what I loved about touch, time. like the s- a small amount that I played it was like how many games you can play. Mm. Like, whereas like footy, bruh, once you do that 80 minutes, your body is no, cooked. Whereas like touch footy, you've just got to be fit. And like, it's yeah. just, and there's always, there's always a chance to score. There's always break. You know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. it's just an entertaining game it's to so play. It's so fun. And it's like, I used to love the social side of it. You go yeah. down to like those carnivals and like there's chicks, mm. there's dudes, like you're having fun. And like you said, then you're like, you play a game and you're like, fucking next end off two hours, go, chill for a bit or you yeah. know what I mean like it's just a good day I mean by the end of it your legs are obviously cooked yeah, yeah. Burnt, but not like, mine but obviously yours were obviously you'd be on the wing <laughs> I'm assuming <laughs> just stay out there and just catch hold paint catch the ball if you drop it I'm spraying you bro I'm telling you I'm mad for work bro and ball player goosey I was just thinking about that today I was actually telling some of the boys I'm like yeah, I'm going to by this podcast and I was saying like and I was thinking fuck man when you first started yeah. and it was all about like goosey shit chopping that and I was yeah. I went on that NRL one but I reshared my um haircut the other day and it was like yeah. a shit chop and one of your things like shit chop like fine two weeks or something like, <laughs> yeah. I was like fuck yeah. I miss those oh fuck man it's um yeah it's, that, that whole goosey thing was like wild Is that, that's pretty much how like that was the you reckon like the biggest thing that took off um, like really got your name out there probably like as in because <sighs> you did that Pongo highlights video too where you were going like <laughs> Remember you going like like you yeah, see him like that? You know, what it was? you know what did actually it was a player reactions like reacting to like to um to highlights or reacting to like young fellas coming through. Mm. I think that really helped. Uh, but the the goosey was yeah that was just insane. Like I couldn't believe like and I, I didn't make goosey up. Like you know what I mean? Like no, I know, but I think you kind of like made it like a, I, I, everyone like everyone like you would knew what a goosey was. was yeah. but it wasn't like a thing until ne- like and even today. I think now that everyone says Goosey, probably because you, you started saying Goosey Which so much. Which is weird, because it's just me and Hoffy, when we played at the Bronx, we'd always just like take the piss. Is that Josh Hoffman? And, yeah, Josh Hoffman. Fuck, sorry. he's a funny guy. He's, he's so funny, funny bro. Like... And so we would take the piss at training all the time, doing Gooseys and calling them Gooseys. Mm. And so like, that's, uh, yeah, it was just crazy. And they work. <laughs> they, they absolutely work. They absolutely work. Um, what was it like, Pappenhausen? What was he like playing against him? Well, obviously like back then, I didn't, I didn't even know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was 15, so I didn't play... I don't know if he made like 15 New South Wales footy. Mm. And I don't know if Ponga knew him back then. But it's kind of only been like the last couple of years since we've like spoken about that we like versed each other. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, no, I can't really say too much to be honest. Like I don't, I don't remember like versing him too much. He obviously didn't make that much of an impact. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, we beat him anyway. So uh, like, who gives a shit? Yeah, like <laughs> fuck losers. I don't talk to them. <laughs> um, what about KP? Was he... You know, like just gun that touched. Was, yeah. did, was what would you think was better, touch or league at that time? It was the both. both it was gun. like, and I was a bit like in awe of him back then because, you know, he was just even back then. No one was like, "Fuck, that's KP." Like, yeah, okay. He made this a year young. Like, he was that dude that made the. I think he made. He might have even made the Queensland Aussies team for footy the year before, like as a fourteen year old or thirteen turned fourteen. So, it was, or maybe he made the touch team. I don't know. There was already rumors, and I was like, "Yeah, he's a gun." Mm. <clears throat> and then. We actually roomed together, or like we stayed with this family up in Darwin together. So we like hung out quite a bit that week. But I can't say he was any better at touching as a footy because obviously he's a gun footy player. But yeah. fuck, he like 
you know, there's those footy boys who play touch, mm. but like he's a touch boy that like he plays touch, like, like he knows how to play touch. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. There's those people just like naturally skillful that can do both. Yeah. But he, um, yeah, he was, he, he carried, he probably carried us that game. Gun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you make 15 appearances that, that first year in first grade, uh, score your first try against, uh, at Rabina Stadium. Do you remember your first try? Yeah, bro. Against yes, the Knights, nice, lad. Can't like? forget that one. It was good. We were, um, we were down to, I think we had 11 people at one stage. It was either 11 or 12. Well, Keegan got sent off twice or something. But <laughs> I just remember they did the cross field and I got the lucky tap back. I think it bounced up. Ran, dive in the corner and just whole stacks on. Literally, like, there's 10 of us jumping yep. on me because I think we might have, that put us up, maybe by six. Mm. And then Ash goes down and kicks a field goal. So, like, those games early in the career, I'm pretty, like, good at remembering games and, like, mm. how it went and if I played well or not. But, um, and yeah, that was, like, so the first game, Melbourne, Tough game. We just lost. Wasn't mm. the end of the world. Next game, get a win at home. I was just like, fuck it, cloud nine, eh? Yeah. And a try. The try is just like, the feeling of like putting that ball down and seeing the, the grass and that. It's yeah. Just it's a fucking good feel. And like, especially at home, man. Like, I love playing at Seabus. Like, mm. we don't have the biggest crowds in the NRL, but like, fuck, I love playing at Seabus. Like, mm. yeah, it's, it's a good feeling like scoring in front of like, It's a good crowd. field. Like, it's a great field to play. Oh, it's a great, great stadium, great yeah. field. And like, we got good fans. Mm. Um, but it's not like it's 50,000 at Suncorp, but like yeah. for me, you know, and I think it's probably the same with anyone at home, like mm. just scoring in front of your crowd, just knowing yeah. they're going to go off. It's good. Um, so you play 15 games that year and basically at this stage, did, had you re-signed already or were you at the end of a deal or? I think that I'd signed for like 2018, 19 and 20. So okay. I had a three year deal going into the NRL. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then possibly at the end of 19, I upgraded to for 2021 20, 22 and then in 2021 i upgraded for two three four five six okay okay so three like three separate comp contracts so um 2019 you rolled in and basically did the club kind of say to you that you you'd be able to get that fullback spot 2019 after having the 14 or 15 games in your first year so so i played the first 11 or 15 at six oh okay. 2018 yeah then i went back for the last four games and that's probably where I played my best four games. Okay. So I rolled in 29, but we still had Michael Gordon at the club. Mm. And I was like, didn't really know. Like, it was kind of up and coming fullback, but then you've got someone like Michael Gordon, who's yep. a good player as well. Um, so I ended up playing 14 mm. at the start of that year. They had um, Ash Taylor and Tyron Roberts. Michael Gordon at the back. So I remember, like, sitting on the bench going, like, fuck. Like, I wasn't in a point where I was like, I played 15 games. It wasn't like yeah. I was at a point where I was like, fuck this is shit, I want to change class. Yeah, yeah, I, sure. Obviously, I just wanted to be starting. Mm. Like any, then, any player. Yeah, as start. you want. Yeah. And then throughout throughout the year, I uh, played uh, a bit of sixth and a bit of fullback with Michael Gordon uh, yep. losing his car. So there was no like certainty of my position that year. In 2019, I was like kind of in and out of mm. 14, fullback and 5'8". Yeah, okay. So you were still struggling with like, you were a first grader, but like a starting first grader. Yeah, you know I mean? it was weird. It was like, it was like our coach was like, you're an established first grader. He goes, I think you're going to be a rep player one day. Mm. But at the moment, you're just like kind of not fitting into our team. Like I think our team's better with Ash and Tyrone Hobbs, mm. Mark Gordon at the back. So then, and that was the year that um, Garth got, got sacked. So then we had Justin Holbrook come in and then mm. that's when he was like, I want you to be our fullback for 2020. Okay. Um, and also that year, you made the Australian um, the Australian side in the World Cup Nines. Yeah. Uh, what was that like? Fuck, that was sick. Yeah. It was, uh, we won four games that year at yeah. Titans and yeah. uh, we got the spoon. So to go into an Aussie Nines with players like the Fox, Chez, um, Wade Gray, yeah, all those, Mitch Mo Gutho, mm. who now, like, I'm you know, now mates with, which is yeah. awesome, like, to be in those camps. Um, so that was sick. Like, that was a, that was an awesome weekend. It was about, I, I went over to Europe 2019 for about a month and was back for four days and straight into that camp. So I was freaking bit pudgy <laughs> i was blowing um and then we went straight from that into the um the 23s mm. which was also sick i got to meet over room with brads shit yeah. like that camel graham those sort of boys so yeah sick. um and put like i mean just just the players you're around and they've all essentially gone on to you know what i mean and including yourself um who was the who was the biggest pest for the world cup nines all the under 23s either um, one um pest in a lovable way fuck, i reckon it woke up like Fox isn't a pest, but he's just his energy is so good, man. Like <laughs> yeah. he's just always got his speakers, and we used to play that on um, that home among the gum trees. Like that was like our team yeah, song because yeah, yeah. all the other, um, you know, like some old, they always had their own like kind of songs and that sort of stuff. So we used to play that, and just just his energy was like so infectious. Just 
I see him now at doggies and that shit. I'm like, fuck, like that's good, man. Like, yeah. he knows how to get the boys up like on a captain's run and get them mm. into game day and that. Yeah. Um, and then 23s, probably just probably just Rad's just he, he's a legend. Like I only met him um, that camp and mm. we were straight in the roomies and like he wasn't a pest, but he's he's just as you th- as you know he's just he's just a funny guy. Larrikin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. legend. Um, so 2020, I mean, this year, obviously a weird year because like you have an injury kind of plagued year, but at the same time, you have that incredible moment. You get called up to play for Queensland. Like, what's that feeling like, bro? Yeah. How did it happen? It was, like you said, it was a weird year. It was a, it was a, um, <clears throat> what's it called? So I fractured my back that year. Um, it was a, um, not a semi fracture, I forget what it's called, but turned to a full fracture. And um I pretty much if it wasn't for COVID, like stopping the competition, mm. like I wasn't gonna play. They were just like, let's just focus on twenty twenty one, get you back, well. right? Because yeah. it's going back and forth and I was just getting like mistreated and shit and it was cooked and then it was just like as soon as I said they said, Don't worry about playing this year, just get your rehab done and we'll mm. focus on next year. I was like, sweet, then it started like flying, you know, mm. the process. So I came back and um yeah, played the last nine games. In my opinion, the best form I've been in just that season. And I say to the boys, like, I'm about 90 kilos now. Mm. I played that, that season 93. Pizza before every every game. Like, that was my, my oh, pre-game really, meal. Yeah. And then I went into 21 thinking, yeah, I'm the man. Pizza before the games. And I started, like, playing average. I'm like, now, <laughs> now I'm just a fatty eating pizza. <laughs> like, it's not the same this year. Yeah, yeah. So I had, to, I had to drop it back and brush the pizza and that. But, um, yeah, there was kind of, you know, you'd kind of play a decent game. And then you'd see some comments they'd be like fuck you know he's trying he's gonna earn his origin spot and, you know obviously you don't really read into it but you, yeah. it's still in your head you know yeah. you're fuck you want to play origin it's at the end of the year and that sort of stuff and then we versed knights at the end of the game at the end of the year and i remember chatting to ponger after the game and he's like fuck i'm getting surgery on my shoulder like i'm gonna need it and i was like surely like you can play all right like surely yeah, you're getting it afterwards yeah he's like no nah, i don't think i will and i was thinking fuck and then i got a sideline interview from kevy and that's when he said like have you got anything planned? Like, hopefully you're going to be busy the next... So you had no inkling whatsoever? No, no, no. I haven't spoken anything until then. I was like, okay, surely I'm going to be in the squad yeah. because he's kind of said to me, I think you're going to be busy. You know, like, yeah. surely he's not saying, I think you're busy, then just brushing me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Uh, uh, and, but then the funny thing is, is because he was going to be the coach, mm. but then Wayne was the coach, you know, mm. because uh, I think because he took the Broncos gig or yeah. whatever. So, you know, he might have been keen and then Wayne might have been like, nah, yeah, like, no. this, this, he's a Derek, so. <laughs> I think <laughs> um, Wayne has said that about you before. Right, but... I reckon he would have. <laughs> uh, so, I got a call, I think from our club manager, say you're in the camp, which is, I was like, then there started being like articles, you know, there was like this meme and it was like, Pong out of origin, there's like this meme of this dude opening a door and I had like me with like, like a big smile on my face or some shit. And uh, it's hard not to like laugh and read yeah. that shit and then, yeah. um, but even going to camp, we had Corey Allen, um, Val Holmes, players who can play fullback. Yeah. So I was like, fuck, I'm in the squad, which is me. Like, obviously, I was stoked. I'm mm. around fucking the Origin team, mm. if I play or not. And then, I'm just trying to remember, like, I think I just kind of, it wasn't so much of a conversation earlier. It was more just Wayne, just like, oh, you know, go at the back. Mm. You know, and train. You yeah, know, it okay. wasn't so much like, you know, early in the week, like this is what we're doing. I think maybe as the week went on, he was kind of like, it was kind of like a thing. Like I was just training at fullback. Yep. I was like, fuck, this is sick. But like that brings back like 2018, like, or 2017, like nervous vibes. Like, yeah, wow. Yeah. Even like training sessions, like you're practicing catching at the end and like, you just fucking, you're just always on edge. Like yep. it's like, they're the best care. Everyone says like they're the best cares, which they mm. are, mm. but yeah, they're like standards and yep. like catching, passing, everything like that. You're like, fuck you gotta be on you don't want to make any mistakes yeah you don't want monster going the fuck are you doing you Derek so, <laughs> so like yeah pretty on edge but that was yeah that was awesome that was that was crazy and because cause we're in the bubble you know like we mm. were just all like so tight playing cards and that mm. sort of shit and it's just I still like think now like trip out that I actually played Origin you know like mm. growing up watching Origin thinking like in my head the best of the best are playing in that game mm. and it's just fucking just worked out well the way everything fell that year like with like how my back got better than <clears throat> um you know ponga might not have got surgery and i just might have been in the camp you mm. know what i mean like yeah and i might have never played so just everything worked out well and then obviously getting the win was mm. fucking crazy was were you guys aware in the camp of regards to the chat around it being you know the worst side ever and all that kind of stuff or 
Because, I mean, not only did you get to play Origin, you did it in one of the most historic wins in yeah. recent memories. Yeah. yeah during so the series. I think, um, I think there was that kind of chat, but it was never, we were never used as like, oh, fuck, they're saying this about it. It mm. wasn't so much like that. I think you just kind of, everyone has social media, everyone reads it. Um, there might have been a bit of Ches being like, fuck, they're doubting us, but like, you know, like that sort of chat, but yeah. it wasn't like, they didn't bring up the article in front of everyone. Yeah, like, yeah. Look at the, what the fucking Buzz is saying. I'm yeah. never saying this. Um, and like, to be fair, looking back on it, like, it probably was one of the worst slides <laughs> on paper. You know, like we had, I think we had like six debutants. You had like fringe NRL players. That, yeah. Like that were like, like, that could be in and out of a side. At, yeah, it's like, know. is he starting or bench at club? Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? And then, I say it now, like we had no right to win that game mm. in Adelaide um, in terms of just our squad or our team. Like I said, six debutants, I think. Like it was about three or four of us from the Titans who mm. didn't go too well, all that sort of stuff. But I'm telling you, I just think I just think Wayne's, uh, he's just a king. Like just mm. the way he was chanting throughout the week, you know, saying, um, you know, I just, I think I remember we had this chat and he's like, no one's going to be perfect. But I need everyone in this room to have an eight out of ten game. If we mm. all have an eight out of ten game, we're gonna get the job. Like, I don't need you. you know, things are gonna go wrong, whatever. But he said, like, I need everyone to be on their own game. You play eight out of ten, we'll get the win. And mm. just spoke about like the importance of it and forty years anniversary, all that sort of stuff. And then um, obviously we we're confident we could win. Like we never thought, oh fuck, like we're up against yeah. this. But like, if you're a betting man, mm. you they would have been favourites. Like yeah. I'm assuming. Um. But yeah, then going down there and then it was a same day travel, you know, it wasn't like a, because of COVID. Torture. I remember fucking, we checked in this hotel at say midday and we were leaving at like six. And they're the days where you're like, you're so excited, but then you also want it to go real slow because you're nervous. You don't like want the game yeah. to come around too quick. So I remember just like laying there sleeping and just laying on my phone like, and then it'd be like quarter to five. You're like meeting in the team room at like 5.30, you're like, fuck like it's starting to come along it's coming real now and then you get along and then it was because like a big like oval it was like a real kind of like it wasn't real windy night but it was still windy you get the breeze i'm thinking i know clearly does these torpies <laughs> like i know he's got these torpies like am i gonna go out here drop six balls <laughs> and queensland hate me you know what i mean yeah yeah i'm like fuck and then i was just like similar to the debut like we ran it and we did an anthem i'm just like what's, fuck, the, let's what's go. that feeling bro you've got the queensland maroon right, it's fucked honest to god it and is. the anthem is playing you're in origin yeah no nah, it is it's like i can't remember i don't think i cried but like I, you get that kind of like i got that thing in my eye just like fuck like this is actually happening like this mm. is sick and a similar feeling to my debut like fuck like no matter what happens like this is sick like mm. i fucking couldn't wait um <clears throat> and it actually was quite uh normal game until there was like stoppages it'd be like you're playing your shit you're playing shit someone drops it and you kind of look up you're like fuck i'm in origin right yeah, now you yeah, know what i mean like yeah, it's just yeah. like i play another game yep. and then you stop and you see like teddy walking across with clear like in their blue jersey and you're like fuck like mm. this is the middle of an origin game kind of like you know how many people are watching how many people are relying on this that mm. sort of shit um but i think that's probably the big thing that wayne pushes as well and as they always push in those camps is like you know like they always say you know you don't do it for for us you do it for the farmer in fucking in whoop whoop yeah, he, yeah. he has to go work the next you know what I mean and like, I remember going to school changes their whole week bro 100% fuck 100% it changes their year like, yeah yeah I remember going to school and the the very few games that we would lose luckily we had that era where everyone was fucking killing it when mm. I was growing up you get those fucking two kids in your school that are blues fans yeah and you're just like fucking they're <laughs> India man you're like yeah, yeah like I said luckily when I grew up it was like fucking eight straight or whatever it was mm. like fucking killing it so i was pretty lucky i didn't have to get into too many arguments but like you know what i mean like you wake up the next day you're like oh mm. you go to bed so happy like this year like i was gutted i didn't play because mm. it looked like one of the best literally i reckon one of the best series like, that game three is one of the best games i've ever seen in my life right that was unbelievable but like i've never gone to bed so happy you know what yeah, i mean like it's yeah. it, you know sometimes you can like not play and be like fuck like i just wish i was out there but like yeah. obviously i wish i was out there but i'm like like him, like when those got the intercept, you go, go, oh, <laughs> like riding him home, man. So it was iconic, bro. And I know New oh, South yeah. Welshmen like fans, like I don't want to hear that. And it's like, yeah, but like if Joey was calling out, go Teddy or whatever, you'd feel 100%. the same way. Like, yeah, like so. I, I, in my opinion, I mean, I'd obviously bias. Obviously, Blues probably don't think it was one of the best games ever, but I think that game three, just the physicality, it's everything the most about physical it, man. game I've ever watched. Yeah, I've never seen a game like that that physical. Um, yeah, that that game three, like for me as well. Like, even as an ex player, like 
it made my whole the whole next few months happy. Yeah, man. even like you know the next day I had a show with Kim Smith and like he rolls in, he stoked, and I'm and he's stoked, he's dusty, <laughs> only because he stayed up so late and he's got an early show. Um, yeah, yeah, and just like hugging him and going fuck yeah, you did it, bro, and he's yeah. like fuck, oh, did it, and I just yeah. like just a like I'll remember that forever, yeah. you know, and it's all off the back of. Mm. A game of footy yeah but like think about the farmer or the the single parent that's you know they're working yep. 60 hours a week they don't really have anything else to look forward to other than their kids obviously you get the win for them like mm. that changes like I, th- I really think obviously covid was terrible like absolutely terrible but like i think it showed how important sport is in people's lives like mm. could you imagine if there was no sport in australia going on like i understand there are more important things in sport i understand that but it brings happiness 100%. into people's lives especially during covid like i'm i'm not a player anymore and and i want the sport on so i can be happy you know like yeah. even if i wasn't doing another content or whatever yeah um and i think that proved it over the, the like it was all i looked forward to during that period was the weekend and sport yeah there's everything else you couldn't do anything yeah 100%. and that's i think that's why it was like good that it was like that in between sort of like hate love for us still playing you know, get the people who are like fuck they're still doing this they're doing blah 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 but then like we're in like the most strict bubble ever mm. but then also you got you got to watch footy on the weekend even yeah. though it was weird there was no crowds man like yeah. they got the fake crowd noise I remember I only played a few games that year with no crowds and like it's weird man it feels like an opposed session yeah. you can we versus, I remember we versus Bulldogs at Suncorp obviously there's no one in there and I remember like I think Corey Allen was playing fullback and like I'm a good mate Corey but like I remember like hearing him saying shit and I'm like I shouldn't be able to hear you right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. I can hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, usually you don't hear any of that. Like, yeah. It's not like we play at C bus and you can't hear anything to do next to you, but you still don't hear their fullback chatting. Sh- like, you don't yeah. hear that and, like, blowing up at the ref. It's literally like an opposed session. Yeah. Like, like, there's no one in the crowd. It's, it's a weird feeling, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, nah, it's, 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 uh, it's different just times. a vibe. Different times. Hopefully, we never go back to it. <laughs> Jesus. Fuck, Holy not. heck is. Um, Okay, so yeah, yeah, you have that. What do you remember from the game specifically? Because like you're probably bizarre, not bizarrely, but you probably play the best game you've ever played. Game one for I Queensland. Think, well, at least from my perspective. I think um, the things I remember, obviously the try, obviously the tries that we scored, um, and then one of <laughs> one of Cleary's bombs, because <laughs> uh, I remember it went up. And I'm like. Fuck this! Is, I you know you, as as you can see, they either hold the ball like that, ready to kick, or they hold yeah, it like that for the big you know floaty. I'm like, ah shit! And like, that's something that like I catch, I'll catch a thousand bombs a week, mm. every week, and I'll still go in game day. And I'm like, we can, yeah, like, which I don't know if it's like a good or bad thing, but it's just I'll never go out to a game and be like, whatever. Which whatever I'm happens, assuming, happens. I'm assuming Teddy doesn't go into games <laughs> thinking, fuck, is he gonna put up a talk? You know what I mean? He just goes out and catches them. Yeah. Hopefully, like the the more I play, the uh, the more comfortable I get. But um. Mm. Just, I just honestly remember that final whistle. I, my try was sick. Um, but you, you forget how like big of an impact it is. Like I remember after the game, my favorite thing that I was getting tagged in or anything was people at pubs, mm. you know, filming it and then going like this and people going off. Yeah, yeah. And when I scored, I'm like, we're, I think we're down 12 nil or something like that. And I didn't, I didn't go off at all. I kind of scored. Like I've watched it a few times because it fucking makes me happy. Oh, no, fuck, obviously. <laughs> I mean, like, obviously. it's on my screen. Really. <laughs> 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 <That's it. laughs> but, um, like, I was pretty calm. It was a bit like just like in the moment. And I'm like, you know, still losing. I'm not going to get up, layer and up, and then I can lose the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then obviously Munster scored uh, that sick try. And then I think uh, Gagai or Coates, I think it was Coates, scored the other one. But yeah, just honestly, right at the end, like, there's no better feeling than uh, walking around. Um, you know, you're doing kind of interviews and you you slap up one of your mates, you go yeah. in there, and then you go over to see your family. And they're like, fuck, that was sick. And then you just you're waiting to get back in the sheds, and, and like literally, it's on the bucket. It was always on the bucket list for me to sing that that song with yeah. Alfie. Mm. You know, like I I still think there's I've had no better feeling of footy than singing that that yeah 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 song with like really with the beers like everyone's Alfie in there. Alfie going crazy. Fucking Alfie running it. Yeah, fuck, he's a legend. He's a guy. Uh, but in terms of the actual game, just those little moments. Like, I remember not everything, but like, I can't remember everything. But things mm. that stand out. Obviously, the couple of tries that we scored, and then just that that final whistle yeah um, oh, when did it when it was like that awkward kind of like we're laying on him like is yeah, it too long yeah yeah, yeah. And that, there was like that controversy sort of thing but as soon as he blew I was like happy days and so so you obviously get injured you can't play the rest of the series but what was it like watching that game three that year were you in the squad as in like did you get to go to the game with the squad nah so I actually so I did my Liz Frank like a 71st minute of that game mm. 
I remember limping around. It was like, saw what it was all right. Fuck it, an origin game, like, you know, adrenaline. Yeah. yeah. Afterwards, saw, saw, saw. But like, limping around, like, having a few beers on the plane, like, fuck, this is sick. Yeah. Next day, I've got to move it on. I go to put any what pressure on it. Just go on. can't put anything on it. I'm like, fuck, I'm thinking, well, there's no way I'm playing next Wednesday yeah. or whenever it was. Hoping game three. I had to go get a scan. They said I did this. And then I'm like, the club's kind of like, all right, like, you can stay in camp if you want. But they didn't, they never made me come out. But they're like, obviously, if you want to come out, like, we can get surgery done straight away, help mm. you for next season. Yeah. And I would have stayed in, but it was like, I was stoked. Like, boys would come up to me. I was sitting there and they're like, fuck, like, what is it? I'm like, oh, at least I ain't going to get surgery. They're like, fuck, like, kind of feeling sorry for you. I'm like, bro, like, I just got to try on Origin Day when we won the game. Like, mm. I'm not sad the slightest. Like, yeah. I injured my foot, but like, if we had lost and I didn't, I'm like, Obviously, I was gutted I was out for the, the thing, but I was like, fuck, I just had the best night ever. Yeah. So, and then I was kind of hobbling around, and then you're like, fucking on the bus like this, and everyone's just kind of like walking past, like, oh, like, how are you? And I was like, fuck, I'm just going to get out, get my surgery done. Mm. And it would have been sweet, because they were in the bubble, I couldn't come back in. Mm. So, I ended up going to game three as a fan mm. with uh, Liam, my mate, literally sitting like in like the um, family section, you know, kind because yeah. I was... I think I was like four days mm. surgery, like foot was throbbing. Uh, literally watching as a fan, so it was it was quite tough, like not being like on the bench with them. Yeah. But for the sake of like hobbling around for like two weeks with yeah. this freaking Liz Frank like, in a bubble, it was just it was yeah in a bubble. And then like staying there at training like this, and then it's like it's just it's just a bit tough. And I couldn't even travel to Sydney with them because the game two was in Sydney because oh, I wasn't okay. allowed to travel. It was just mm. shit like that, and I was like. Stayed in for a few days after camp, and I was like, fuck, I'm going to go out and get surgery and that. Mm. But um, I reconvened with them in Byron afterwards, which was fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the, the great Munster. Um, I mean, obviously, you don't have to go into detail, but mm. was it as epic as we all hope it was? Yeah, it was fun. It was <laughs> epic. So, And like like I said, my, my foot was like four or five days old from surgery. But yeah, that was, um, that was awesome. You know, to have fun like that with you know players that you just look up to and then mm. obviously someone like Munster who's on the comp yeah and an origin we're like I couldn't imagine so but now we had a fun fun few days Mate, what, a, what an incredible win yeah. um so 2020 roll one rolls around um you hairline fracture to the jaw yeah yeah and then obviously this year um so, so 2021 you've had a, uh, did you make the finals or 2020 you've made the finals 2021. 2021. Yeah. And you got beaten by Roosters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you could have won that game too, oh, which is we crazy. Won it, yep. Yeah. Oh, I remember now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there. Buzz. Yeah. Buzz ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it because I, I know, I know Paddy copped it up for it. I know. I like, feel bad too. To be fair, he owned it. We had our mad Monday the next day and... He was already mocking himself. He's yeah. Like, oh, like I passed that one. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it was yeah, good. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like an awkward. It's not thing, like he meant it. Like, obviously, it was the wrong play, but like these things. You, you happen. know, you know, like in a game like that, in the moment, <laughs> so it, it's it's so easy to look at it and go, "Why did you not pass?" Like, you see in the, the game, replay a million times in slow mo. Yeah, like it's. But um, and Paddy Herbert is like a strong ball runner, so normally he would have been yeah. able to make the line. Well, he got the arm free. He kind of get it, but then he just. Fucked it up, went straight to the sideline. That's when Corey's on standing like this. So I'm watching it at home because I broke my jaw like three, four against mm. South. And we're getting beaten like 12 nil or whatever. And I'm having some beers at home, like watching it. I've got Donny over, you know, we've got the boys that weren't playing over. Mm. We start coming back, we're like, fuck, look at this, like this comeback. And then all of a sudden, we're down by four or whatever it is, two maybe. And then we make that break down the left. And I'm looking at Donnie going, no fucking way. Because I was back the next week. I had this double-sided mouth guard. I don't know how I was going to play in it. I wouldn't have been oh, able to breathe. Bro, I would have not so been able funny. to breathe. That'd but I was so like, funny. I'm not not playing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we end up playing the finals that year. Yeah. Um, so close, bro. So close. Um, but anyway, this year rolls around and it just, you know, we've kind of already spoken about it. Really, defense was like the issue mm. this year. But going into this next year, I personally would have this is this would have been mine spine from the start. It would have been uh Foz at seven, you at six, Campbell at one. But you guys, it seems the reports and you don't have to confirm or deny that that may not be the case. What like what is the vibe I guess in regards to your spine? Um 
so at the moment I'm training more at one mm. and six. Uh, it's just kind of so I had a good chat to Justin, and there was a little bit of speculation about me playing centers, uh, and I kindly kind of shut that down mm. to Justin. I was like, uh, I just was thinking, you know, I've, like like I said this year I was playing every full game. You know, you just about to chat to the coach. He goes, "This is what you do." Blah blah. Mm. Each player, and like every game, he said to me, "Get your hands on the footy." That's what I want. Yeah. Sweet. All right. It's clear game plan. So I'm thinking. I don't want to be in the center stand there, and especially if our team's not going well. Like, imagine not getting the foot. You, you look yeah. something like Valentine Holmes. Yeah. You win a game, you're playing center, you're getting involved, scoring tries. Yeah, gone. Yeah. If you're not, then I'm like, I can't, I can't just be standing at it, you know. Yeah. Like, especially coming from a position like six or one. Yeah. And then he was like, Yeah, yeah. So he goes, so they're pretty much going to play six or one, and it's kind of, uh, he's just kind of waiting to see, you know, how Tanner and Foz look in the halves. Yeah. How JC's flying? If JC's flying, maybe me and Foz in the hubs. Mm. Or if Tanner's flying, maybe me at the back. Then mm. you're there. Um, just trying to work it all out. But at the moment, like I said, I've only done a few few weeks with the team now. Um, yeah. In rehab before Christmas, but I'm training more at one than six, and I'm really enjoying being back there. But um, which position do you prefer? One. <laughs> you like one? Yeah. Just because you can roam anywhere and, yeah. and you don't have to in line. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Blues who wrestles actually. I'm like, do I have to do this? Like, if I'm playing one, but um. I don't know, like, I think, you know, we've all seen JC play, he's a freak, and yeah. we're good mates, so it's just trying to fit how we all fit into the team, and like, I like, I always say in, in interviews, I don't care if I play 6-1, and one. I prefer to play 1, but again, not being cliche, I got asked uh, before Christmas, oh, so do you want to play 6-1, and one? Mm. I literally said, I want to win, like, if our team's best with JC at the back, and mm. me at 6, and, or me at the back, and thingy at him, and whatever, mm. yeah. then... I, I'd rather win games, sing a song after a game and be yeah. playing in this position. Yeah. You know, so I think it's just up to Justin to find out where we all find our best. But um, if he's asked me for my preference, I, I, I've, I've told him fullback. Yeah. Um, now it's going to be interesting to see how it all turns out. Um, so what about, uh, like, is this year just about basically a full year of footy, no injury? Is that like the main goal at the moment? Um, yeah. I mean, individual goals are to uh, get back into origin. Yeah. And to play finals footy, yeah, and then obviously yeah, just look at my body as, as much as I can. Because like I look for a lot of last year, your injury, your groin was like giving you trouble, kind of thing. Yeah, it was actually like pretty bad. So I missed around one for it, mm. and then it was just kind of like uh, got that os- osteitis pubis, whatever it is. Mm. It's kind of referred to my lower abs. Um, and it just got to a point where like I wasn't training at all throughout the week. Um, I'd be on anti inflammatory post game, then throughout the week, and yeah, then how's your guts going? Yeah, shit, torture, no pun. So like, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, couldn't really train to be like, oh, we need to work on this, and I'll be in there going like, yeah, we're going fifty percent because I can't really, it's like accelerating and that sort of stuff, and then towards like, I reckon like the last eight to ten games, we just didn't really have the depth, we didn't have players like Foran and Tanner who could step into the halves or whatever. Um, to to really like say okay, have two weeks off and really try try get it right. Yeah. Um, so it's just getting worse and worse. And short turnarounds were horrible. Like I would literally just train captain's run, mm. um, and get through to the game. And then the last yeah six to seven games in warm up, I'm playing in the halves. I'm kicking to this side, whoever the halfback is kicking to that side. Um, but I've got our trainer kicking because I can't kick because it's hurting my groin too much. Right, <sighs> this before a game. Yeah. So I'm I'm standing there as like the trainers be passing the footy to our forty five or forty year old assistant <laughs> who's then kicking to the corner, and I'm literally standing there like cruisy as yeah. like thinking what do I do right now like I'm yeah. not kicking, he's kicking there and I'm like mm. pa- practicing the passing off the deck mm. you know like because I'd kick and go like oh frick like yeah. it's gonna hurt it for a game, mm. so and then we we're on the verge of getting the spoon like, mm. I didn't want to like miss out and then so by the end of the season came around they're like. Yeah, okay. Like, I wasn't doing anything in the gym. I wasn't doing any hanging, any core, anything wow. that was going to be hurting it. Wow. Like, just... It felt like I had a hernia. Like, I'd sneeze and mm. it would just be pain. Really? Like, sit up out of bed. If I had to, like, change my pillow, anything like that. Oh, wow. So, it was just, like, a frustrating year. Uh, but then, like... But they're, like, the things, like, you don't really, like... No one really knows about, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I just see you on the field playing. Yeah, they're, like... I made a break against Bronx at Suncorp and, like... I literally was like looking like this because I couldn't like take off and mm. I was just like saying like fuck I, I think I need a break and then we'll just like I said we were like on the brink of on the brink again the spoon um, 
So then I think the club was like appreciative. Mm. So when we finished, they're like, all right. So my plan was always to be rehabbed until Christmas. Mm. So yeah, I had about six weeks off running, like the longest I've ever gone without running since I've played footy. You know, like yeah. you always go for a couple of shots in the off season. Mm. Six or seven weeks, come back, like I said to you before, had a bit of a run. It was the exact same. I was like, oh, fuck, why is this still sore? I thought it'd yeah. be fine. Mm. But it kind of works out the more I strength around it. I'm doing a lot of leg weights, core weights, um, adductor sort of shit now. Mm. And it's, it is getting better. Like, still a bit stiff, pulls up a bit stiff up the trainings, but... Really? I didn't know this, to be honest. <laughs> what, a lot of like, leg weights? You're like, yeah. Are you serious? I'm just saying, bro. Like, I'm right. not having a crack. I'm just saying I didn't really notice that you're doing leg weights. That's all. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, so it is, it is getting stronger. Which yep. is good, yeah. And like I said, I've got a, I've had an enjoyable preseason. Just have you boys train. like hit full speed in that and everything, like full um, good, as in yeah, pretty fitness. much, probably yeah. about ninety five percent. Yeah, okay. It's just like um, and you're not pulling up sore or anything yet. Yeah, a little bit, a little, little bit. bit. But so they kind of like focusing Monday, Fridays being my big day, mm. uh, and then Wednesdays I'm kind of capped at four k. Yep. So the other day it was sore, like on Wednesday, like Monday was big. Tuesday's like a half kind of like wrestle sort of day. Then Wednesday was um bit sore like bit slow to get going and i was a bit like shit but then they're like i had the biggest week i'd had in 18 months okay. last last week yeah the week before so like high days a lot of high speed mm. running and that sort of stuff so they reckon i ran like um more high speed efforts than i did like um all season yeah wow. last week wow just because like i wasn't hitting so they're really the trying speed. to build you up to it where yeah. there's no pain you've got the strength around it kind of thing yeah and there's like i know it's though there's always gonna be like a little bit but as long as that like recovers quickly, then it, then it's sweet. Yeah. Whereas it was like last year I'd do a goosey, like yeah. that sort of shit hurts it. Yeah. And I'd be like hunched over like a minute because it was just like wow. painful as. And now it's kind of like I'll do a goosey and it's like a bit sore, but then it's like kind of ready yeah. to go by the next time. Mm. Probably because that strength that you are building around at the core strength. Yeah. Um, so I'm shredded. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly didn't notice. So yeah, I take my shirt off for this. <laughs> Bro, I thought they were moving you in the forwards. Like I'm being serious. I'm a ball playing locker. <laughs> <laughs> Um, ask all the boys his favorite rapper of all time. What's that? Favorite rapper of all time. You ask me. Yeah, I ask all the boys this. Oh, favorite okay. rapper of all time. Well, Drake's my favorite artist. Yeah, because he's not really like he's, he's a rapper, a but he's rapper. like a. Uh, in terms of rapping, Twenty One Savage. Uh, 21. <laughs> 21, <laughs> 21, 21, 21, 21, 21. <laughs> well, have you seen all the memes of like, uh, can you do something for me? The yeah, Drake, bro. bro. Bad Jersey and like, yeah. bro. The Drake Don't, memes are so oi, good. Undefeated lay. He's in that um Drake the type of guy. Drake the type of guy memes oh. are the best. <laughs> oh bro, his those memes are so good, man. Like, <laughs> like some like someone was like, uh, Drake's the type of guy to put his hands on his hips when he's angry. <laughs> <laughs> oh bro, I'm gonna find some of these afters because I don't want to say the wrong ones. But um those ones are funny. I've actually seen this because obviously like for, I like I love Drake. And there's ones where um he's playing basketball, like actual Drake, and he gets yeah. fouled. And he's like, um, like, are we or some shit? And <laughs> yeah, he yeah. says, it's like, Drake the type of guy to say, are we? Like, so he obviously like listens to those memes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's uh, Another one was uh, Drake's the type of guy to come up behind you, put his hands over your eyes and say, guess who? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that was what I was thinking of, bro. <laughs> really? Bro, if you Google them, there's so many good bro, ones, bro. Yeah, and they go and they're elite. forever. They're, they're elite. Just, they're so good. And, and I reckon, I reckon, I like to think, because I like him, I like to think that he... He is that kind of funny sort of dude. Sure, and, and he laughs. You got to lean into shit. it, bro. Otherwise, it would make you crazy. But yeah, twenty one. Uh, <laughs> uh, twenty one. Twenty one. <laughs> twenty one. Um, favorite movie of all time. Dark Knight. The Dark Knight. Yeah, bro. So that's number two. Number two at the. Yes, yeah, so of the begins. trilogy. Batman Begins, Dark, Dark Knight, Knight, and Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises. Rises. But that's um, one with Heath Ledger. Okay, Knight. yeah, Heath Ledger. Fucking Goated. outstanding movie. Goaded. Everything about it, like from Goated. the opening scene, just every scene is just... Yeah, that's a goaded movie. What's your favorite movie? Um, probably Gladiator. That's a good movie. Yeah, yeah, because I, like I see a lot of myself in like Maximus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro, same rig. <laughs> same pouch. <laughs> Little bum bag. <laughs> it's nah, going to go it, soon, bro. It's going soon. Yeah, what's Trust the go, me. lad? What's it's the a go? hot boy summer, bro. When I first was with you at Field Day, you're a shred lord. Yeah. No, you, know, you know what it is? Your business is doing well. <laughs> you're married. There's a lot of work. Let's put it that way. There's a lot of but I'm getting back to it, bro. I'm getting back to Mate, it. You're looking good, lad. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. Like, there's only a little bit there, bro. Only a little pouch. But like, I've got big arms and you. You've got big biceps. Then you as well. And you're a professional <laughs> athlete. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. like literally what you get paid to do. 
We don't know. But <laughs> we don't do biceps. All I do is legs now. Yeah, as we you didn't. Tell, as we, you said on the way in. I didn't notice, bro. You compliment on the way in, so... <laughs> I thought you'd like... You're being tough on the camera I, now. <laughs> I honestly thought there was like an anti-leg weights like policy the Titans had. Yes, <laughs> man. <seeing> today. <laughs> That's kind of rattled me, eh? Like, we do so much calves and it just... Yeah, I'm, I'm I got, I got tiny calves too, bro. I got tiny calves too. Who wants calves anyway? But like car, if you've got big calves, you're only quick over like a short period. You need the little calves to be able to run long Sprinter distance. Sprinters calves. And, and sh- you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like whereas you've got big calves, you're only good over 10, 15. Yeah. You don't want that. I'm built well, for speed, it, not for fucking 10 meters. Yeah, bro. No one wants 10 meters. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's not that bad. Um, bro, if everything happens perfectly in the next 12 months, where are you? What are you doing? Uh, Wait, from today? From today. Oh, like what have I done? No, from today, if everything happens perfectly, you live in the dream year. What What are you doing today in twelve months' time? Yeah, fucking another podcast with you, lad. Okay, honestly, well, fuck- no, like, what is it? It's a nineteenth of January. Nineteenth of January, two forty. I reckon I'll be back here. If okay, everything goes okay. perfectly. Hopefully, they'll gypsy will let us use it. Okay. <laughs> Could you imagine he wants to like break the cycle and he's like, nah, not letting nah, you use it. Not anymore. And you're too arrogant to fly to Sydney, so. Like we'd have to cancel it. I am too arrogant to fly to Sydney. You're so arrogant. I don't like Sydney. It's the mission. It's too oh, far. Okay. Well, sorry, you don't like me either then because I live there or? <laughs> Bro, you could come up. You just come up once in like three years to see me. I went a field day to see you. Yeah, that's a good that's point, fair. bro. That's a fair you point. To, you used to go back and forth and now you're just down there. Yeah, because I had the bar, bro. No, I don't have the bar anymore. You don't have the bar anymore? No, I sold it ages ago. Jeez, like, years, oh no <laughs> come on bro it's arrogant. no it's Actually, not arrogant. Well, it was the one that we were really yeah yeah, yeah. As, start of covid that's COVID hit, now bro yeah so like, you're just straight podcasts potty and beer and merch oh and beer and merch that's right that's whatever i haven't had any of those beers in age ever since <laughs> oh, fuck. my address hasn't changed all good bro just ask you the question like what am i supposed to fucking read your mind should I hire a mind I reader? Mind, I wouldn't mind a surprise every now and then <laughs> just a little oh, nice surprise after a tough day at preseason. A little case of blokies. I no, wouldn't mind it. You know you could get it any time. Stop trying His to... hands. <laughs> <laughs> no, you could only get them once because you've been hospital after the first time. Fair. <laughs> I'll let you have it. That's fair. <laughs> nah, bro. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you in a year's time. I'll see you at two... F- oh, probably about what? Two? Like, it would be like start when we started. Like yeah, one or two, yeah. An hour ago. In a year's time. Year's if everything time. goes perfectly, that'll be me. Perfectly. So if one thing goes wrong, you're not going to rock up to the fuck body. No. Oh, oh bro, you said fucked. Well, you got to you got to hold up your, uh, your end of the bargain oh, too. Bro, I'm ready to go. Locked it I in. I want to write my calendar. I already messaged the wife and said I need a, a day off. Because you need to message her to do stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, at least you admit it. No, actually, I don't. I'm fucking a big dog. Cut that shit out. <laughs> Cut the shit out. Cut the end of the shit. No, no. That's nah, sweet. It's actually. You know what is good about being in a relationship like starting a relationship when you get older mm. you know your own like as in you know the barriers you want to set up for yourself so like for example if you, when you meet someone like i met my wife we were both extremely clear about this is what the way it's going to be and this is the way it's going to be and that's the way it was whereas yeah. when you're younger you're like you're too afraid to like set a standard and be like mm. oh this is what i like this is what i don't like yeah that's why i mean not to go on about like a lo- unless we're going into like a love we can go to love chat, we can go to a love chat now yeah. what i don't get is and I'm similar to you when I had a girl. I had a girlfriend since I was uh, 19 to 24. Mm. Recently single. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. 21. <laughs> Bro, literally no girls listen to this podcast. So it'd be dudes telling girls to message yeah, me. Well, no, some girls do. I take that back. Girls. Some, some girls do. It's about 12%. Well, that's women. all right. Yeah, yeah. So it's not none. Um, uh, yeah, that's what, one thing I will never understand is like, that's what even I did as a 19-year-old. Like, mm. If I'm gonna, if I want to go out with my mates or do something like this, mm. it's a bit different. I understand people have kids. You got shit you have to do, whatever. Yeah. And there's things you have to do, but you see some boys, no, uh, no kids, not married, misses, but just refuse to like. They go, oh, it's not worth the arguing. I'm like, you're 21. <laughs> Why are you worried about that? I, I just it baffles me. Yeah, I, I, I used to have the like earlier on in one of my earlier relationships that was the case where like they would kind of manipulate you into they pretend like they're not telling you to go but they're telling you to go yeah. and, and vice versa a lot of men do this to women too yep. it's not a it's not a gender specific thing and i remember when that relationship finished i said i'll never yep. ever fucking do that again so mm-hmm. i think it just takes experience yeah of like knowing what some, you want some do it from a young age because they're just mature or they're selfish <laughs> and you no, don't know how I, was, to I was always like you don't know how to compromise yeah i do <laughs> i would always if she wanted to go out Sweet. Please. Yeah, no, I'm the same. It's like, I think it's obviously a trust thing in that, but like not once did, did my ex 
ever tell me not to go out. Yeah. And I never once told if she go, oh, I'm going to this festival in the middle of the year. Yeah. Sweet. Of course. Like you know, like yeah. But I mean obviously dudes do say no you're not and chicks yeah. obviously say no you're not. But I mean yeah. I don't know, I guess if you want to put up with that and you want to put up with it but I just I just don't understand it. if you've got kids I can understand well kids is because you're both trying to you work have to out be take like, care of yeah. the kids and that but I think for a lot of guys as I said when I was younger I had a partner that did that shit to me like like literally constantly and you're a cat and I was a cat and you, but now yeah. I'm a fucking big dog now you're a big dog you don't, you don't take that dog. shit I don't bro. take shit from nobody <laughs> sorry bro. man <laughs> <laughs> I love that <laughs> <laughs> actually you know what she'd be like do you want any podcast release this week I'm like nah nah no. fuck none of them none of them at all <laughs> nah nah we, we, as I said we were both she, we were both a little bit older so we both knew exactly what we wanted and we knew do you know what I mean yeah and so both of us like, and it's clear let's do whatever you want but the, the ironic thing is that we always want to do shit together mm. like as you know we'll go to festies together love wins love always wins bro it always wins it always wins that's right. Use your field day together. A field day together. Went to yeah. Europe. Had a great. We actually get. I'm. I'm fortunate. We, I've got a relationship where I actually get along. Like she's a friend as well, rather yeah. than just like a partner. Mm. Um, but okay. The moral of the story is I'm a big dog now. I'm not a cat yeah. anymore. Okay. That's the we'll moral finish story. on you being a big dog. <laughs> like literally big. Oh, bro. And what? You're the small dog because you've got no legs left. I'm shredded. <laughs> I'm shredded, little lad. Bro, you look like you haven't eaten in like a week. I'm actually a bit heavier than I was. I've been sauntering up heaps. Eh? So just right. fat. You are putting fat on then? Yeah. Because like muscle may as well than fat. Yeah, exactly. I actually, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, I fucked myself sense. up then. I fucked myself up then. Anyway, we'll end Sweet. the potty. Um, my missus doesn't tell me what to do. <laughs> Neither. I'm <Thanks>. recently single. <laughs> Please follow me.